All right, welcome to our unit here on nuclear chemistry. Today's topic is atomic mass and percent abundance. Lesson one of three, your objectives are as follows. You will learn what isotopic mass is in terms of atomic mass units. You will understand percent abundance and how it applies to isotopes of a particular element. And you will learn what atomic mass is and how we calculate it. Okay, feel free to pause this video anytime for your quick write. How could you find the average weight between three students who weigh 145 pounds, 123 pounds, and 114 pounds? In a class of 30, 18 students have brown hair. How could you calculate the percentage of students with brown hair? Little review here. What is the mass number of an isotope? What is the atomic number of an isotope? Okay, go ahead and pause this while you do your quick write. I'm going to move on. All right, atomic mass unit or AMU. Okay, a little review here. Okay, if we could weigh or mass a single proton or neutron, it would have a mass of about 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. Okay, that's an incredibly small number to work with. A more convenient unit to measure the mass of a proton or neutron is the atomic mass unit, or AMU. If you remember, 1 AMU okay, is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24th grams and is defined as 1 12th the mass of a carbon-12 atom. Okay, it is essentially 1 AMU, the weight of a proton or neutron. Okay, so a proton has a mass of... 1.007 AMU, not exactly one, okay? And a neutron has a slightly heavier mass of 1.008 AMU. Once again, it's not exactly one, okay? So isotopic mass. If you remember, atoms that have the same number of protons but different number of neutrons are called isotopes. Okay, a little review here. So they are the same element because they have the same number of protons, but because they have a different amount of neutrons in their nucleus, they naturally contain a different mass. They weigh more or less. Okay, so isotopic mass is the mass of a specific isotope. Let's look at the carbon-12 isotope here. Okay, the stable form of carbon. If we could weigh or mass a single carbon-12 atom on a scale, it would have a mass of 12 AMU, six protons and six neutrons. Okay, if we add another, or if we add a neutron to carbon-12, we create the carbon-13 isotope with a mass of 13.004 AMU. Okay, but what would happen if we add another neutron? Well, if we add yet another neutron to carbon-13, we create carbon-14 with a mass of 14.003 AMU. Okay. And notice our mass number and atomic number, right? Number of uh, protons is six, which doesn't change, and the number of neutrons is um, eight, okay? So notice the isotopic mass changed with the addition of each neutron. Carbon in all elements occur in nature as a mixture of isotopes, okay? Some of these isotopes are more abundant than others while others are more rare and less common in nature. So carbon-14 here is very rare, okay? Carbon-12 is very common. So for your notes, what is isotopic mass? Question on the left-hand side, answer goes on the right-hand side of your notes. Please write the example and pause this while you work on this. I'm gonna move on. All right, natural percent abundance of isotopes. Natural abundance is the amount of isotopes in percent, is what we, get, we give it in, of a particular element found in nature. Okay, for example, let's say this pie graph accounts for all the carbon atoms found in nature. Okay, 100% of carbon atoms. The carbon-12 isotope is the stable form of carbon and accounts for 98.9% .9 of all carbon atoms out there found in nature. Therefore, we say carbon-12 has a natural abundance of 98.9%. Another isotope of carbon we just learned about was carbon-13. Well, carbon-13 is less common, making up about 
0.01% of all carbon atoms found in nature. Okay, so carbon-13 here. Isotopes like carbon-14 are very rare and account for only about 0.014% of all carbon atoms found in nature. So carbon-14 is very rare. Therefore, we say carbon-13 has a natural abundance of 1.01% and carbon-14 has a natural abundance of 0.014%. Okay. Let's take a look at one more example with magnesium. Okay. Once again, the pie graph accounts for 100% of the magnesium atoms found in nature. Okay. Magnesium has three isotopes. Okay. Magnesium 24. 78.99% of all magnesium atoms out there in nature, all right, are magnesium 24. Magnesium 25, well, 10% of all magnesium atoms out there are magnesium 25 isotope. Okay, and finally, okay, magnesium 26 isotope makes up for about 11.01% okay, of all magnesium atoms out there. Okay, notice they all add up to 100 here. So, for your notes, what is natural percent abundance? Okay, question on the left-hand side, answer goes on the right-hand side. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. All right, so practice real quick. Complete each table by calculating the percent abundance of the isotope missing in the table below. Remember, the total sum should add up to 100%. Go ahead and pause this while you work on these, okay? When you're ready to see the answers, hit play. All right, so for chlorine 37 isotope, what is its percent abundance? Well, hopefully you got a percent of abundance of about 33%, all right? And for the strontium 84 isotope, hopefully you got a percent abundance of about 0.5%, okay? Not too hard. All right, atomic mass. Atomic mass or weight of an element is the weighted average of all the elements isotopes based on their natural abundance. Okay, the atomic mass for every element can be found on the periodic table, usually directly below the atomic symbol. Looking at your periodic table, you can see that hydrogen has an atomic mass of 1.007, okay, and hydrogen is basically a pro single proton, so that's 1.007 AMU. Helium has an atomic mass of 4.002 AMU. Okay, carbon has an atomic mass of 12.011. Okay, and finally magnesium has an atomic mass of 24.305. Okay, well notice, okay, the atomic mass is not an even number. All right. So remember, the atomic mass is an average number based on the weight of isotopes and how abundant they are in nature. Okay, If all carbon atoms were carbon-12 atoms, then the atomic mass of carbon would be exactly 12, 12.00, 6 protons and 6 neutrons. But we just learned that there's isotopes out there of carbon. Okay, In fact, 1% of carbon atoms in nature are carbon-13 atoms and 0.014% of carbon atoms in nature are carbon-14 atoms. Okay, so this complicates matters a little bit. We have to average these isotopes into the, into the weight. So by averaging the percent abundance and weight for each isotope of carbon, we get an uneven number of 12.01, okay? So what is atomic mass? Question on the left-hand side. Answer goes on the right-hand side. Go ahead and pause this while you work on this, please. Okay, I'm going to move on. All right, calculating atomic mass. Atomic mass can be expressed by the equation below. Okay, to calculate atomic mass, multiply the exact mass of each isotope by its percent abundance, okay, then divide it by 100. For example, let's calculate the atomic mass for carbon here. Okay. The most abundant isotopes of carbon are carbon-12 and carbon-13. We're not going to worry about carbon-14 because it's so rare. To calculate atomic mass for any element, we need two things, the mass of the isotope and the percent abundance. Okay, 
So carbon-12, if you remember, has an atomic mass of 12 AMU. Okay, six protons and six neutrons. Okay, so we can put this in our table. And if you remember, carbon-12 has a percent abundance of 98.9% .9 in nature. It is the most common isotope of carbon. Okay. Now let's look at carbon-13. Carbon-13 has an atomic mass okay, of 13.004. Okay, plug that into our table. Remember, it has one more neutron, so it's going to weigh a little bit more than carbon-12. Okay. Unlike carbon-12, though, carbon-13 is much less abundant in nature. It is rare. It is only about 1.01% .01 of all carbon atoms are carbon-13. Okay. But nonetheless, it will affect our atomic mass. So we can plug that into our table here. All right. Substituting these values into our equation. All right. This isotope mass for carbon-12 is 12. Okay. The percent abundance for carbon-12 is 98.9%. All right. So for carbon-13, the isotope mass is 13.004. Okay. And for carbon-13, the percent abundance is 1.01%. Okay, divide that by 100. Okay, solving for the atomic mass of carbon, we get 12.011, which is equivalent to the atomic mass for carbon seen on the periodic table. Okay, so you can literally check to see if you got the right answer by looking on the periodic table. Okay, let's consider one more example here. Recall that magnesium has three isotopes. Magnesium 24, 25, and 26. Okay, the table below summarizes their mass and percent abundance for each isotope. Okay, let's substitute these values into the equation. All right, so for magnesium 24 first, which has an isotope mass of 23.985, okay, and a percent abundance of 78.99%. Okay, let's look at magnesium 25. Okay, it has an isotopic mass of 24.986 okay and a percent abundance of 10 and our final isotope magnesium 26 has an isotopic mass of 25.985 and a percent abundance of 11.01 percent okay divide these all by 100 and okay solving for the atomic mass of magnesium we get 24.305, which is equivalent to the atomic mass of magnesium seen on our periodic table. Okay? So, your turn. All right? Using the equation and information below, determine the atomic mass for each element. All right? Go ahead and pause this while you work on this. Okay? When you're ready to see the answers, hit play. All right, let's see how you did. So the atomic mass for copper is 63.546. And once again, you could, you could just look on the periodic table to verify your answer. All right, let's look at lithium here, which has two isotopes, lithium 6 and 7. Okay, and the atomic mass for lithium is hopefully you got something close to 6.944. All right, okay, so... Let's go ahead and summarize here. All right. Explain how the isotopic mass of carbon changes with the addition of a neutron. All right. Compare and contrast isotopic mass with an isotope's natural abundance. Okay. What is atomic mass and how it is, is it calculated? All right. Explain that in your own words if you can. Okay. Is the atomic mass of an, an even number? If not, why? If so, why? And where on the periodic table can the atomic mass be found? Okay, go ahead and pause this while you do your summary and we'll see you next time.